welcome. This is the St. John Fisher College Oral History Project for the Pioneer Class of 1955. With me I have Pete Canzano. Um, welcome, Pete. Well, thank you. <coughs> thank you, Shana. It's a pleasure being here. It's a pleasure. And uh, fortunately, um, the um, health conditions are, are such that I recovered last week where the doctor said I didn't have any restrictions that I'm flying here. He didn't want me to drive. So he said, provided you don't do anything stupid. I said, oh, no, I'm not going to do anything stupid. And my <laughs> wife said, he won't. So I'm on my best behavior, Shana. Oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I'm going to start off simple. How old were you when you came to Fisher? Oh, my goodness. Uh, now, that's an honest question. Let's see. Probably 19, I guess. 19? Yeah. I was born in 1932. and. Um, of course, the opening class uh, was, what, 51, right? And we graduated in 55. Mm -hmm. And uh, the adventure um, was just beginning to take hold at that time. I was aware of uh, the Congregation of St. Basil as being a tremendous teaching order because of our experiences at Aquinas. And that's where we first got to know the Congregation of St. Basil. And uh, matter of fact, like most people uh, today, I said, well, maybe I'll go to St. Michael's College in Canada, Toronto, Canada, which was run by the Congregation of St. Basil. Of course. A continuation of the wonderful Jesuit, uh, I mean, pardon me, that's the <laughs> other order, uh, a Brazilian training uh, uh, establishment at Aquinas. Uh, went up there in the summertime of 50, I guess it was, and then found out that hey, they're going to open up down at Rochester, New York, a place called St. John Fisher College. It was natural that, uh, that uh, the progression would lead from Aquinas with a year of work right into St. John Fisher College. After all, they needed us during that of period they. of time. That's, you know, they needed our money and they couldn't possibly survive without a group of us. Mm -hmm. So we opened up with the pardon? <laughs> you Aquinas boys. Right. I mean, after <laughs> all, we're basically 110 men uh, in that college during that period of time. How interesting that thought process uh, worked out over time. Because <laughs> yeah. we did add about 25 other students uh, to our particular year group as time went, went forward, if my memory serves me right. <laughs> so you did answer my question. Is that why you chose St. John Fisher College? Because it was a absolutely facility? that was one of the considerations. Of course, uh, the other thing, let's be very honest, uh, was money. Why should I go to St. Michael's and, and have to fund room and board when I already had room and board and mm -hmm. was going to get the same basic training? I looked at their curriculum uh, mm -hmm. when I was in the decision making process. I was smart enough at least to do that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but um, as t uh, af after the class convened and we started feeling our oats and became acquainted with the, with the, the faculty, I can still remember one of the first uh, exams. I think it was a quarterly exam in uh, Father Murphy, not, 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 uh, not the president of the college, the other Father Murphy, okay. uh, holding um, an English ca uh, class. And I think the quarterly exam, the warm up at least, uh, said to the group, draw me a picture of the Earl of Shaftesbury. Did anybody ever tell you th about that story? No. Well, he went over the results of that particular exam and he was not happy with one of the students' responses with a picture of the Earl of Shaftesbury, which was drawn for him. And you could see the hair and the facial expression and the beard. Mm -hmm. It was a true picture of the Earl of Shaftesbury. So that didn't oh, go so over Oh, so actually well. you were supposed to, okay, okay, I got it. I don't think he got an A. No, I got it. <laughs> Uh, somewhere in the historical fact, that's a fact 
that may or may not have been uncovered, but it still remains with me to this day. <laughs> uh, and it was a tremendous opportunity, to be mm -hmm. honest with you. I think may have, I may have answered your question. <laughs> oh, you definitely did. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, well, why don't you tell me one of your stories you were gonna t you were gonna tell me about? Well, that was one of them. That was one of them. <laughs> right, and let's see if I got another one here that. Yeah. Um, every, I'm sure, of course, that uh, others have told you about the construction uh, uh, of the campus itself without the tower and the pink doors, doors that didn't close, uh, boards that led, led to the entranceway of the uh, main uh, campus. Mm -hmm. uh, building, the only campus building there without its tower. Uh, and the entranceway was, consisted of wooden planks, uh, narrow ones at that. It seems there was construction uh, shortage from time to time, doors that didn't close, mm. and things that didn't work. And wonderful uh, cafeteria of brown gravy and, and beef on the steam line in the basement. Oh. But it was interesting. We we grew out of it, and we didn't get fat either. <laughs> no, no, you don't get you don't gain the thirty pounds. <laughs> oh, I've I've been back to the cafeteria since, uh, oh, yeah. and I, I noticed the difference. <laughs> yeah, it's a little different. <laughs> the um, um, spirit of adventure, though, really was what uh, impressed us, uh, even as a uh, young group. Uh, we learned from each other. Mm -hmm. We learned uh, to dodge bullets. We learned about the honor code. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, during the 50s, it seems to me that the military academy uh, at West Point was undergoing some form of uh, challenges about the way they administered their honor code with their students. They, mm -hmm. uh, they found that uh, the tests that they were administering to the classmen was being uh, compromised and it was a big quote unquote scandal at the time and everybody wondered how St. John Fisher College was going to conduct their examination. Are we going to be on the honor code? Did you hear, did anybody tell you about that one? No. And so uh, my memory serves me correctly and I know that's still pretty good. Uh, everybody wondered how the Congregation of St. Basil was going to conduct their first major exam at the uh, six-month cycle. I, I believe it was the six-month one. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, everybody was told that, yes, more than likely we would have some form of the honor code instilled at St. John Fisher College. At least that's what we thought we heard. Yeah. And exam day arrives and <laughs> and the booklets started being handed out the the uh, exam uh, pads were being handed out and people who were taking French were told to sit in this particular straight row those taking math in this row and those who were taking some form of history in that row, uh, whatever the discipline was uh, being uh, called for on that particular day. And two or three priests came in with their respective exam books and started passing out the books as well. So one of our group said, hey, wait a minute. Aren't we going to be on the honor code? Oh, absolutely. And he no sooner got the words out of his mouth when the doors opened up and I swear there must have been at least 10 priests or clerics that came in. They put chairs on the windowsills uh, in the then existing library building so they could sit up high. And somebody <laughs> said, wait a minute, I thought this was going to be the honor system. And they looked with this straight face <laughs> saying, well, this is the honor system and we're here to protect your honor. 
<laughs> <laughs> and needless to say, and there were some interesting people caught on unawares. <laughs> You don't see that nowadays. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that they had anything in mind. But <laughs> you never know. Sneaky. But anyways, they did a good job in protecting our honor. <laughs> That's but amazing. you won't find that written anywhere. No, no. That's the first I've heard of it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> they will remember. The class will remember if you call their attention to it. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Maybe I'll ask my next interview. <laughs> well, uh, oh, go ahead. The uh, uh, classes, of course, were very loosely run, and people could sit basically where they wanted. And um, I always chose the back. The of back? The, of the room where you could lean against the wall and tip your chair back. Every once in a while, it would fall down. <laughs> somebody, <laughs> <laughs> somebody said, uh, and I think it was one of the priests, uh, staffing the college at that time said now you guys back there on the lunatic fringe i want you up here in front <laughs> it destroyed our learning experiences from the get-go the lunatic fringe remains with me to this day <laughs> <laughs> For anyone else, who was part of the lunatic fringe just you Pardon or me? who was part of that just oh that, that lunatic fringe mm -hmm. oh my goodness uh, uh, <laughs> Bruce Kirchhoff was in our, our class. He uh, did not finish with our group. He went off to another educational institution. He generally sat in, in the lunatic fringe. I did, and there were a few others. I, I can't recall their, <laughs> their names. <laughs> but it was, a, it was a class seat. <laughs> this oh, I imagine. <laughs> uh, I have a question. Did you have a favorite professor, or did you just sit in the back of all the classes and? You know, that's an interesting question. Um, uh, uh, it, the disciplines were such that uh, it would be an unfair position to say, I have this particular professor as being uh, my favorite. Uh, I was more interested, I think, in, in not having, uh, I was blessed in having the right professors mm -hmm. teaching me the classes I wanted. Uh, Catherine Zelda Lyons taught uh, and monitored some of the education courses. Uh, I liked her uh, very much. She was the registrar, if I serve, my memory serves me right, mm -hmm. and died rather youngly and unexpectedly. Um, uh, of course, uh, Father Flood, the librarian, taught classes. Mm -hmm. He was an him. interesting individual. Mm -hmm. uh, and basically, uh, I have absolutely no uh, problem. Oh, <laughs> yeah, here's another one. Corporation finance, money and banking, which I didn't know it then was going to become my lifestyle, even in the Marine Corps, <laughs> uh, was taught by Wally Rafalco, mm -hmm. a lawyer. Uh, I think he was a lawyer. Uh, came from the Office of Price Administration during World War II. And uh, he was a tough taskmaker and mm -hmm. a tremendous instructor. <laughs> and there again, you don't always have to believe the uh, instructor when he says he's going to do things a certain way, you better be prepared to be flexible and watch out for the unanticipated consequences of your actions. Again, the question from the group of students, myself included, how many questions are there going to be on the exam? Only two questions. And so and this was both for money and, and banking and corporation finance, two separate courses. And I forgot which courses occurred first. But only two questions will be asked, and we believed it to a certain degree. I said, I don't trust him. <laughs> He's a nice <laughs> guy and everything else. I just didn't trust him. Well, you're right. 
Uh, I was right because the first question was, in the following question, there are 150 parts, please. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and those of us who took the exam <laughs> could hardly wait for the second question, oh. which was similarly constructed. So he, he ensured that there was ample coverage of the <laughs> material that he presented during, <laughs> during the whole oh quarter <laughs> or, or uh, six month period of time, as the case may have been. That's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> those who took finance, probably have a better memory of the event than I do. <laughs> probably. That's <laughs> but I thought it was funny. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is. And I've used the technique myself later on in life. <laughs> oh, yeah. Only two questions. <laughs> did you teach as well? Cause I, did you teach as well after the Marines? Well, I did, as a matter of fact, both uh, in and out of the Marine Corps. Um, again, my degree was in education and in uh, social sciences. Uh, I did teach uh, in Victor, New York, after a two-year stint of the Marine Corps. Uh, you remember now that uh, in the 50s there was a draft, mm -hmm. and uh, our particular year group, when we graduated, we commissioned four officers for the Marine Corps. Um, I was a privilege of being one of the four. Uh, Larry Briggs was one, Joe Chaperi was another, and Joe Pesky was the fourth. One, two, three, four. Did I get them all? I think you and, did. <laughs> um, and uh, as I may have told you earlier, Shana, mm -hmm. uh, everybody wanted to be assigned to anything that went bang in the Marine Corps because that's what the spirit of adventure calls for. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Joe Pesky was the successful one of going into infantry, I believe it was yeah. for him and the rest of us ended up in dispersing <laughs> the irresponsible for pay, which is an offshoot of corporation finance, money and banking, right? Came in handy, huh? <laughs> it came in handy, the <laughs> principles were there and, and are still there even today. <laughs> All right. And I do have a picture that I'll leave with you of the four of us uh, in uniform as a student. Thank you, Pete. Yeah. But uh, to answer your question, yes, the teaching experience is uh, not only at Victor High School teaching uh, American and, and world history to seniors and juniors was very interesting for the year that I taught. Then I went back in the Marine Corps uh, in the middle of one of the worst snowstorms Rochester, New York had ever had in the 50s. Oh, yeah. My best man came in from California during that period of time. That was Larry Briggs. Mm -hmm. uh, he said, why are you staying here? He's, uh, he was assigned to uh, 29 Palms. He'll tell you this when he has an opportunity to confirm it. He said, why don't you ask to come back in the Marine Corps? I said, they'll never take me back. They're downsizing. Well, I, I composed the letter. The Marine Corps responded in the middle of a snowstorm saying, if you want to come back in the Marine Corps, we are going to assign you to Quantico, Virginia, you must answer this telegram in 10 days. Yeah. Uh, and then I, <laughs> things changed <laughs> and, and the decision was made rather easily. I looked out the window and I said, I can't wait because <laughs> the Marine Corps had few bases where the cold weather was there. I didn't know about Bridgeport, California at the time, cold weather training, mm. but um, it, it, it's just interesting how things happen or a lifetime. It is. So I actually have a question branching off the Marines. Did they have um, some sort of like um, a Marine based club or sort on campus? Are you talking about uh, like uh, restaurants and things well, like that? Well, like, um, um, like and, and a club or like an on, on campus, like not like a, a restaurant, like, you know how there's athletic clubs, um, like glee clubs, things like that. Uh, well, you see- Like the, the reserves on campus. ROC, oh, I forgot the name of it. Uh, to answer your question, uh, for the Marine Corps and the Navy and the Army, all the services have uh, outlets and training facilities for their 
uh, uh, military personnel, they must also pay attention to their families mm -hmm. uh, while they're in uh, non-hostile environments, okay? And they do have facilities, church services, clubs, associations, uh, where you can, you, you name the way it's, uh, that a small town would be uh, constructed, you bet. Isolated areas always had teaching facilities available, both for the professional military type, for the dependents as well. They were either nearby or uh, on the base. They were readily available. Church services are always there. And the Marine Corps, being small, was more like a family than you might imagine. Mm -hmm. I remember receiving uh, uh, orders to attend the University of Michigan for graduate, uh, my master's program. I knew nobody in the University of Michigan uh, in 1970 when I went there with my family. Uh, the Marine Corps found a need to have somebody who uh, was trained in curriculum development and specialties. And they had a requirement for 11 officers to be assigned. I was one of the 11. I was the first on the scene at the University of Michigan. And there was a major who was in on the outgoing side of the University of Michigan, having completed his electrical engineering um, experiences there. Uh, I didn't know him. He knew I was coming in through connections, however he had got them, mm -hmm. saying that we would be arriving. And the next thing I knew, we were there having a um, um, cookout in his backyard, meeting his family. And two, year, two weeks or so later, he was on the outgoing side and I returned the favor to him. So That's it was nice. small enough where it was truly a community and well known to each other. Experiences were great. And yes, there's plenty of uh, outlets such as you're talking about available on each and every military base. They pay attention to that carefully. Okay. And I know the funding's there. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, let's see. Did you know any uh, veterans at Fisher? Um, I know you weren't in the war, you weren't involved in the Marines yet, but did you know anyone that was involved? In what? Um, any veterans that were involved in the Fisher community while you were attending? Uh, it seemed to me, if I remember correctly, uh, there may have been one who was a veteran, but since it was a Catholic institution, if I remember correctly, it was hard for them to uh, get funding to attend a small Catholic college at that time. There weren't, <clears throat> uh, the GI Bill didn't really come out to provide, for some reason I think there was an impediment in receiving funds either at the collegiate administrative side of the house or directly paid to the individual. I've forgotten what it was. A lot of work had to be done, and it may have been done shortly before um, uh, the gathering of our class. I, I think Senator Keating, a name that comes to mind, did an awful lot of background uh, work to make sure that, uh, that there was legislation empowered to make sure that Catholic institutions at that time received proper funding like any other uh, uh, scholastic uh, activity. But uh, there weren't that many students that had that kind of a background in our class that I'm aware of. There may have been one or two, I think, that came through some form of the GI Bill. And I want to say, I'd be careful if I mention that person I'm thinking of. Oh, you don't have to mention but the person uh, then. Pardon? You don't have to mention the person yeah. then if you're unsure. I think there was one or two, of, but I can't, I don't think there were many that had the, that type of background in the past. Okay. I was just curious because I thought that maybe with your background you'd know if there were any people. Not in our group, not in our year group, but I think later on things picked up dramatically and became a viable source of uh, 
you know, uh, talent coming to St. John Fisher College. And I, a lot of work was done by, by the uh, administration to encourage it too, and rightly so, because it was a good school. It is a good school. Oh, yeah, And it it's an even better school today now. Yeah, I'd like to think so. <laughs> yeah, I know you do. <laughs> so, do you have any more stories you'd like to tell me? Well, <laughs> I'm afraid we would run out of time. <laughs> I think we still have time. Well, you know, the, the one thing that uh, you hear all the good things about the school, and of course, uh, uh, the uh, one great thing, of course, my wife is a student of uh, Nazareth. another school nearby. Oh, you mentioned it. Yeah. I didn't think they were. <laughs> and um, every time I go there with her, I remind them very, very carefully that St. John Fisher College broke the barrier first to have men attend their classes at uh, Nazareth College so that we could get our uh, hours in under social work. We are a group of six or seven people uh, that had courses in sociology or, or social work with uh, Dr. Ford. Mm -hmm. Name comes back even as, at this late stage in my life. Uh, so that we could attend and get credit uh, for classes that we attended at Nazareth College after hours and in conjunction with Na Nazareth College that we could use for fulfilling our degree program. That's so interesting. So we are six men who cracked the barrier first. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing because I, I just heard about that. Um, yeah, because I just mentioned that to me, that I had no idea that, that Fisher went over there for sociology classes. Right, and it was at the close of the day, and I can't remember whether we were guarded or not. <laughs> <laughs> Wrestling. <laughs> so, I know your wife went to Nazareth. Can you tell me more about the relationship between Fisher and Nazareth, the students? Oh, it, it always has been very commendable. I mean, uh, I know the archive... Uh, <laughs> as I've been uh, reminded, has pictures of us attending Nazareth uh, 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 events and vice versa. We have pictures of our events where students from Nazareth uh, uh, have attended. And of course, uh, being a collegiate environment and really in the uh, years gone by, it truly was a collegiate environment where you got to know people very well. Uh, the priests here certainly didn't have any impediments of us marrying uh, fellow students at that other school up the road. Mm -hmm. And I'm one of them. I think uh, we were possibly the second. Uh, uh, we got married in uh, November of 1955 shortly after graduation uh, here, Father Murphy, Father Pendergast, uh, uh, Father O'Mara, they were all in our wedding, uh, all in attendance at our wedding uh, at, uh, uh, when we got married. That's so amazing. Yeah. And we have pictures of them, but I, unfortunately, I can't seem to find them right now. As we Your wedding pictures? Our wedding pit. Well, <laughs> we had the wedding pictures, but the specific one showing um, the three priests together at our wedding, somehow or another, I know it's still around the house, but because we've downsized, I can't put my hands on it. And if I do find it, I certainly will send it to you. Oh, okay. Yeah, Thank you. The, the downsizing recently occurred. We're in uh, independent living. Um, oh. structured home now it's a little bit smaller than what we left but it's um, it's okay it's okay <laughs> <laughs> it was great because it's all on one floor <laughs> yeah no more stairs you don't need it 
<laughs> um, so how did attending Fisher help to um, shape who you are as a person and your life after college? Oh my goodness, that's almost an unfair question. We often uh, compare and like to compare uh, teaching environments, and I'm guilty of that too. I've been blessed because I've attended many of the, uh, and so has my wife, attended many of the inst major institutions uh, learning throughout the United States in our lifetime. Um, I love to compare it against Georgetown, where mm -hmm. I did uh, uh, graduate work in colonial American history from a tough marine task maker who uh, rivaled the teaching types of, uh, uh, of the bazillions, who was unashamedly unashamed in chewing on some of the best priests that you ever wanted to see that happened to be in his seminars because they didn't read page 657 out of a thousand page book of, <laughs> by Thomas Hart Benton, uh, and on and on and on. But anyways, uh, that was an interesting comparison. And I can rank St. John Fisher with the best of them. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been to University of Virginia attending courses of uh, Law of the Sea, uh, uh, and on and on and on. Carolyn has uh, attended the University of California at Irvine uh, uh, and got her master's down in a different part of the University of California in Vista. Uh, I take that back. Uh, Oh boy, Carolyn, I'm sorry. <laughs> She's going to proof this. Uh, uh, where she got her master's, uh, uh, first master's degree, and she attended George Mason University, where she got a master's, another master's in uh, uh, biology. So she has two master's degrees. Um, attended uh, leading seminars at. Uh, Wisconsin and Princeton, and I can rank the education that she got at Nazareth and the education I got here at St. John Fisher College with the very best of them, the very best. And what, what particular course led me to spend all my time in finance? Only God knows for sure. <laughs> I don't know, because there were times where I'd say to myself, please, why didn't I end up <laughs> listening to things that went bang? <laughs> I would have, it would have been more fun. <laughs> what a bad But on the on other hand, it was great experience choosing a Marine Corps career. And we wouldn't, we wouldn't trade it for much. But education-wise, you don't know what course is going to be the one that propels you forward. But, you know, they're, they say, teach me goodness, knowledge, and discipline, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yes. Then there's another set. You gotta know yourself, you gotta know your job, and you gotta know the people you're working with. And it's a combination of all those factors that propel you forward in a lifetime. And I think the information that I learned here at Fisher from people that I've known with and without degrees, have made a significant difference in an outlook that I've developed over a lifetime and that my wife has as well. So it's, it's hard to pinpoint specifically and why I say I learn from everybody. And I think that's what knowledge is all about. Thanks. And I've been so lucky and so has my family. That was beautiful. Yep, been a great <laughs> opportunity. Do you have any stories you'd like to add? It's up to you <laughs> if you have anything that I may not have uh, covered. And certainly I miss all the uh, well, wonderful did. guidance I received from Dr. Pendergast, Father Pendergast, the good doctor, uh, from Zelda Lyons, from Murphy, uh, and the contemporaries uh, that I've become acquainted with over a lifetime. And uh, appreciate the 
opportunity to come back at this late stage. Matter of fact, one of the things that I noticed in the picture that uh, I'm making reference to, the one I can't find, mm -hmm. how young those priests were at that time. They must have been at least in their 40s. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm not going to tell you what my age is now, right? <laughs> you don't need to. It's okay. <laughs> so you we learned a lot. Yeah. You know it's what, been my pleasure, Shana. It was, it's been my pleasure. This has been very helpful. Thank you, Pete. Great. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.